Quitting smoking, why can't I sleep? When you quit, do you get terrible insomnia? Are you struggling to quit because of the lack of sleep when you try and quit? If you have trouble with sleeping when you try to quit smoking and you want to know why and how to deal with it, then this video is for you. Stay to the end of the video as we will give you seven tips, tricks, and hacks to beat insomnia and I will teach you how to get a good night's sleep. My name is Ted Bradley, quit smoking expert. And if this is your first time to this channel and you're interested in quitting smoking and you want tons of tips, tricks, and hacks to quit, then simply hit that subscription button and make sure you also click the notification icon. It simply will notify you when I post new content to the channel. And I post a minimum of two new videos every week. Let's hop right into the content. Why do I get insomnia when I try and quit smoking? First of all, you're not alone. According to science, 42.2% of smokers who try and quit experience sleep issues. Insomnia is simply defined as having difficulty initiating or maintaining sleep. So the question becomes, why does quitting smoking bring on sleeping issues? There's good news and bad news. The bad news is that there are multiple factors that cause sleeping issues when you try and quit smoking. Most people try to quit without the aid of a program and only 7% of people are successful at quitting for three months or longer without using some form of quit smoking program. So that means 93% of us will fail when trying to quit smoking. That means on average, if you're using cold turkey, you will attempt 30 times before making it past three months and you will do this over a 20 year period. If you want to destroy your sleeping patterns and create an environment for insomnia, then quitting smoking and relapsing using the cold turkey method is a recipe for disaster. So if you want to try quitting and you don't want insomnia, then cold turkey is not for you. It's just not. If you're concerned and you want free advice, I will put a link in the description below where you can just simply book yourself into my calendar for a free 15 minute phone consultation. I will get you on the right track to quitting smoking for life. Here's the thing with sleeping issues and smoking. You're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. Here's why. If you smoke, you already likely have sleeping issues. As smoking leads to sleeping issues, most people with sleeping issues also smoke. Here's why sleeping issues and smoking are connected. Nicotine is a heart stimulant. It causes your heart to beat six times more per minute. Nicotine is a chemical stimulant. Smoking already is getting in your way of a restful night's sleep. In fact, over half of all smokers wake up during the night to smoke. Talk about giving yourself sleep issues. Imagine waking up from a restful night's sleep to light up. Smoking causes you to wake up more frequently and it actually shortens the overall length of time you sleep. So how much worse could quitting be for getting a good night's sleep? Well, actually it can be wor worse as the quitting and the relapsing, in other words, quitting and failing over and over is very disruptive to your sleep cycle. Here's why sleep cycles to be successful need to be regular and predictable. Meaning, when your system has a habit, it responds well to that habit, and your system rewards you for the habit. If you have good sleeping habits, you will have longer sleeps coupled with fewer times waking in the night. You'll just get better sleep when your sleeping habits are routine. That's the key with getting a good night's sleep. It's all about routine. Guess what quitting and failing does? It's like walking up to the apple cart sleep and tipping it over. No wonder your sleeping issues get worse when you try and quit. The news still gets even worse than that. Even if you do a program, guess what? Not all programs are created equal. Some programs are designed to help with cravings like the patch, the gum, the lozenge the drugs like Chantix and Zyban, and all these products have additional chemicals in them other than the nicotine. And guess what the side effects of those additional chemicals are? Vivid dreams and insomnia. This just makes the whole dealing with quitting and sleeping issues even worse. If you have sleeping issues and you need to quit, the nicotine replacement therapies like the drug, the patch, the gum, they just aren't for you. That's just the science. So the question becomes, what can you do? First, pick a program to quit smoking that does not use nicotine replacement therapy. So for example, there's tons of them, NLP, EFT, hypnotherapy. 
there's quite a few to choose from. In my program, The Secret to Quitting Smoking for Life, we use the stacking method. As we know that this is the be best known method to help people quit smoking for life and is designed to help with sleeping issues because it's natural and it gets you in sync. If you want more information on stacking, just click that link in the description to book yourself into the free 15 minute phone consultation with me on how to quit smoking and I'll get you a good night's rest. It's free and I'm happy to help. Let's move on. The seven tips and tricks and hacks you can use to get a better night's sleep when quitting. Getting a better night's sleep is all about regularity and routine. Number one, go to bed and wake up at the same time every night and every morning. Getting your body into the routine of a specific bedtime and a specific time to wake up every day will help trigger your body for sleep and for taking on the day. The fact in fact, it is one of the habits that almost all successful people do to be successful and to be more productive in their life. Getting more done every day, living the life you always want to the fullest, well then go to bed at the same time every day and wake up the same time every day. It's one of the keys to that success. Number two, pretend you're three years old. If you have children, you'll understand this life hack. If you do the same thing every night with your three-year-old, you can trigger sleep for them. For example, with my two children, we put them to bed at the same time every night. Every night, we put them to bed at the same time in the same order. In this order, we give them a bath. We put on their pajamas, we brush their hair, we brush the teeth, we get into bed, we read a story, we sing a song. This routine allowed my two children to easily and gently go off to sleep each and every night. Want to see a home where the children struggle with bedtime? Look for a home with no bedtime routine where every night is different. All child experts know routine works super well. So ask yourself, why would this not work for me? Create a bedtime routine and do it at the same time every night. Have a nice warm bath or a shower, remove your makeup, wash your face, brush your teeth, or anything else you need to do before bed and do it every night at the same time in the same order. This routine will help you sleep much better. Number three, no screen time one hour before bed. It's a matter of cognitive stimulation, flashing colors, other people's voices, engaging storylines, breaking news, all of this and more is what you encounter with a flickering TV set or a mobile phone. And it's the total opposite of what you need to do to have a good night's rest. Despite how easy it can be to fall asleep right there on the couch in front of the television, the television is still one of the most stimulating activities you can undertake without actually moving. And the firing of neurons and electrical activity taking place in the brain can wind up the nervous system. Instead, seek out activities that help you to wind down. Many people can fall asleep with the TV on, but it actually disrupts your sleep unless you stay asleep all the way till the morning without waking. And we all know that does not happen. We wake up, we go upstairs, or the TV is constantly putting us to sleep and then waking us up again and we go in and out of sleep just when we should be going down for the night. So even if you say, wait, I can fall asleep in front of the TV, that's not the point. All sleep is not equal and TV sleep is very bad and leads to insomnia. And isn't that what you're trying to avoid? Number four, eat lighter in the evening. Often when we overeat, we feel tired as much of our energy is consumed in digestion. And it's true that if you eat a big meal, you will feel tired. But here's the thing, typically you don't do it within 10 minutes of sleep. You do it two hours or longer before you go to bed for the night. So when you go to bed, you now have excess energy from your body needing to burn off the extra sugar your body produced as a side effect of the large meal. Even if you do go to bed right away, your sleep will be restless, difficult, and uncomfortable, not conducive to a good night's sleep. Number five, exercise, and just not any exercise or at any time. For example, not right before bed. Building muscles has been shown to improve the quality of sleep, and it can also help you fall asleep faster and wake you up less frequently throughout the night. So try doing exercises like shoulder presses, bicep curls, tricep dips, squats, lunges, calf raises, sit-ups, and push-ups. That will make you stronger. No matter your gender or age, muscle building is shown to improve overall sleep. Number six, avoid caffeine and alcohol. There have been thousands of studies of how alcohol ruins a good night's sleep. Often people drink to fall asleep and it works, but again, it's the quality of the sleep. When you drink to fall asleep, the alcohol induces 
due to sleep that is short, shallow, and restless. The quality is not there, and your sleeps get shorter and shorter and more frequent waking. The more you develop this habit, the worse it's going to be. Often we think it's a cure for a good night's sleep, I'll have a drink. It's a mistake. It doesn't really help us sleep. In fact, it does more harm than good. Basically, what you think is helping you sleep is actually giving you sleep issues. Number seven, only sleep in your bed and do nothing else in your bed. If you read or do other things in your bed, over time you will teach your body that bed is for more than sleeping. So your body thinks, what am I supposed to be doing here? Reading or sleeping? Don't confuse your body. If all you do is sleep in your bed, then your body will know what to do when you lay down for the night. As a bonus tip, also do not think about reality when you go to sleep. Here's why. When you think about reality, your mind gets revved up. This is the perfect time to use our imagination and fantasy instead. Pretend to be a professional athlete or a police officer or a ballerina. Whatever fantasies you enjoy, just as long as they are not based on your actual reality. We know from hypnosis, when you engage your fantasy or imagination, we are engaging the unconscious mind. And it brings the unconscious mind forward, which is a precursor to all sleep. If you have any comments, just make them in the comment section below. Also, if you have any questions, just put them in the comment section below so other people can benefit from them. I answer all questions in the comment section below. Also, if this video was helpful, please subscribe. If this is your first time to this channel and you're interested in quitting smoking and you want tons of tips, tricks, and hacks to quit, then simply hit the subscription button and smash the notification icon. It simply will notify you when I post new content to the channel, which I do minimum twice a week. Also, take advantage of that free 15-minute phone consultation with me. The link is in the description below. I will get you on the right track to quitting smoking for the rest of your life. Thank you so much for your time and attentions. Blessing to everyone, and I look forward to speaking with you.